So, and hear me out, because this is going to be wild as hell. <clears throat> so, the thing about Final Fantasy fourteen, I was watching a bunch of stuff, right? And I have come to the conclusion that A Realm Reborn is Final Fantasy 1. Because, because, Final Fantasy 1, you know, and in 14 at the very beginning, you're like dead ass nobodies. Like, you, your character, nobody, what the fuck? Nobody knows who you are, right? You come in, you, you, you do some things, you meet some people. And then they're all like, oh, hey, this guy's pretty cool. Oh, uh, this, this is some real uh, weird fucky shit going on with, with some stuff, but he doesn't seem to be affected by it. He or she doesn't seem to be affected by it, right? So, you get your gang, right? You got your thief, Sancred. You got your white mage, Ishtola. You got your black mage, Papalimo. You've got your monk, uh, Ida. And then we have you uh, being a warrior. And what are the six main and rather only components of a party in Final Fantasy 1? A fighter slash warrior, a black mage, a thief, a white mage, a black belt, and then uh, whatever is left that I, already, that I already didn't say, right? Oh, and a red mage. So, you go through, you do your thing, and the in canon. For the cinematic representation of Warrior of Light, him and his gang travel through time. What do you do in Final Fantasy 1? A lot. Traveling through time, because, well, Garland and Chaos keeps want to fuck with shit. So you travel through time, a lot. You solve the problems, you move on. Right? You fight the elemental fiends. Titan, Garuda, Ifrit, Leviathan, Ramu. Right? You fight those guys. So then you go through, you deal with the problems everything gets fixed right and then right as for as for the part in Final Fantasy 1 where after you do everything time gets wiped again so nobody remembers who can't people remember in a realm of born the original warriors of light right okay so moving on from there we got heaven's word heaven's word is Final Fantasy 2 because at the end of a realm of born at the end two, at the end two five, right? You lose everything. Scions murked. Uh, Nanamo uh, assumed to be dead, right? You lose everything. You gotta go on a run. People are chasing you down. Everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. And after all that happens and you escape, it's you, Alphano, Tataru. In Final Fantasy two. After you barely managed to escape, it's three people. Firion, Guy, and Maria. Right? Okay. So, as you go through the course of Final Fantasy 2, what are you doing? You're getting your boys back. Right? You're getting your whole team back. You're building up a resistance. You're clearing your names. You are making moves, making a name for yourself. You're doing some stuff. In Heaven's Word... What do you have to do? You have to find all your buddies, find all the scions, fix some problems, deal with some new problems, etc., etc. Right? The main villain of Final Fantasy II is Emperor Mateus. Or Emperor, depending on which fucking translation you play. It doesn't really matter. But his representative is Amrick's dad. The guy who controls the Holy See. Right? What is his main goal? To fuck with shit, keep the dragons out, and essentially just get abnormal amounts of power that he does not deserve. What is the Emperor doing in Final Fantasy 2? The same damn thing, right? So, you kick his teeth in, right? You send the Emperor to literal hell, he comes back and is like, yeah, fuck you, I'm gonna fight you now, right? You deal with Amorix's dad, or rather, you deal with all the dudes in the Holy See, being the people that work for him. In Final Fantasy 2, you deal with all the guys that the Emperor is like, hey, I beat you, you work for me now. Okay? So, 
after all that is said and done, then from, I believe, 3-2 or 3-3, come the Warriors of Darkness. Who are the Warriors of Darkness is from? Final Fantasy 3, because they came from their time, their dimension, to do whatever it was to do in yours, to try to reset the balance in theirs. Uh, you fight them, you body them, they move on, and they're like, alright, well, shit. I guess we were doing the wrong thing. Alright. Uh, hold on. Die. So moving on from there, then we get to the end of Heaven's Word being uh, the beginning of Final Fantasy VI. Because, what do you do at the end of Heaven's Word? You take back Balos' wall, and then you get to moving along mm, excuse me, towards reclaiming Alamigo and Doma, right? In Final Fantasy VI, one of the big themes is reclaiming things, right? So, hey, look at, hey. So, at the beginning of six, Terra is a slave. She doesn't know what emotions are. She doesn't even know how to be what she is outside of the mind control. So, you break her free of that mind control, she suddenly learns and reclaims her humanity because she's half human, half Esper. We're gonna pause this so I can, so I can continue with my theory. All right, so from there, we continue on and we start taking stuff back and people step into roles that they initially did not want to do, but they had to step up to the plate, right? So Celeste in six is a general for the Gestalian army. She did not want to do that. Lys was a scion who was from Alamigo who reluctantly took her position because it was pretty much forced on her the same way it was for Celeste, right? And you can you can use uh, Celeste slash Lise with Yugiri interchangeably because they kind of do the same thing, right? So then, as you're going through Stormblood, you have to go find a samurai. Who is a samurai have to find? Hien in Stormblood. In six, it's Cyan. Where are they both from? They're from Doma. Doma is under control by the army. You have to take back Doma from the army in both six and Stormblood, right? So then, going on from all of that, who's the big bad psychopath of the game? Kefka in six. Xenos in Stormblood. Now, Kefka is crazy because he was experimented on. Xenos is psycho just because, hey, I want a good fight. Nobody can give me a fight. So I'm going to cause chaos just because I can. Okay? Okay. Who is an unreasonably staunt follower of Xenos? Asahi. Who is an unreasonably staunt follower of Kefka until he gets some sense in his head? Oh. Damn, I can't, I can't. General Leo, Leo, that's his name, Leo, right? So Leo gets some sense and say, you know what? I don't want to work for the army anymore. Goodbye. And then, you know, he gets some sense and says, he's like, all right, I'm gonna fight Kefka now. What was good? Yeah, Xenos did get experimented on, but not to the same degree that Kefka did. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a kind of one-to-one -one thing, but yes, that is true. So I'm, I'm so I'll, I'll, we'll backtrack and include that part in. All right. So once you go through all of that, then you have the Warring Triad to deal with. All the other crazy psychos who work for Kefka. And then on the Stormblood side, you got all this crap happening around Xenos. And Xenos is like, you know what? I want more power. So I'm going to go get more power somehow, some kind of way. And eventually, right, he fuses with Shinryu. That is Xenos getting the extra boost in power that he wanted. In Final Fantasy VI, 
Kafka literally becomes God and you fight and kill God, right? So then after all of that is said and done, Kafka bites it. Xenos bites it up until he's like, wait a minute, I'm alive again, but I want my body back. So he goes and gets his body back, right? So then, once Stormblood is all said and done, you're getting to the very end with the Gimlet Dark and your buddies are going AWOL and they're vanishing. Now, we're at Final Fantasy 3 again. Because when all your buddies are gone and you have to make your way to the first, right? In the context of 3 at the very beginning, where the game starts out, it is at an unaccessible, magically hidden, floating island that nobody from the ground floor can get access to. With the first, nobody except you can get there through magical means. Nobody else knows that it exists up until, you know, you get to telling people stuff. So then, right... In Final Fantasy 3, it's too much light, not enough darkness, things are getting out of whack, demons are getting a little, little crazy and stuff. Shadowbringers, too much light, not enough darkness, things are getting a little crazy and stuff, right? So then, you're going through, you're finding all your boys, you're getting a real, you're getting a proper understanding of a world you had no idea existed, because the kids in Final Fantasy 3, they only knew their floating island. They had no idea of the floating world, the planet beneath them, right? Not a damn clue. So, you're going through all of that, you're bringing darkness back, you're setting the world right, and then, and then, who is your main not party member buddy tagging along with you? Ardberg. What crew is he with? The original Warriors of Darkness. In Final Fantasy 3, just as you are really making headway and about to blow through the Crystal Tower, guess who comes to get in your way? The Warriors of Darkness. Right? There is a warrior, there are casters, there are healers in that group. You fight them, you beat them, they bite the bullet, you move on, one of them sticks around, right? The one guy that sticks around is the ones like, hey, so I did all this fuck shit, and I want to help you try to fix it, right? But the difference between Shadowbringers and 3 is that in 3, all of the Warriors of Darkness pull up to help you out with your stuff. In Shadowbringers, it's just Ardbert. But, going back to the Crystal Tower thing, right? In Final Fantasy 3, the guy connected to the Crystal Tower is, a, is an ancient dude named Desh. No memory. He's like, who am I? What's going on? I don't know what I'm doing. Right? You help him figure out what it is he's supposed to be doing. And he's like, oh yeah, hey, look, there's this tower thing. I can kind of control it. Who's the guy who runs the Crystal Tower and Shadowbringers? Crystal x Grahatia. Grahatia Grahatia is Desh. Right? So, you go through all of that. And then as you're killing all the Sin Eaters and absorbing all the light, trying to contain it, you're like, oh, wait, something is horribly, horribly wrong with me. I might turn into a giant, grotesque monster and kill everyone I know and love against my will. Final Fantasy III, you fight the Cloud of Darkness, who is what the Warriors of Darkness would have wound up turning into had they not done what they did. And... Just as you are fighting Cloud of Darkness, it is a scripted fight where you just lose. You cannot beat her the first time around, right? So, when you go through Amorot and you fight the thing, and Marcel pulls up and he's like, Hey, you know, you did your thing, but you're kind of stupid, so you're in a box, right? As the light is trying to burst forth from your body, and you nearly die from it, that... In Final Fantasy 3 is a scripted loss against the Cloud of Darkness. And then the Warrior of Darkness, Ardbert, shows up. He's like, hey, look, I got you, homie. Let's do this, right? And then 
everybody else pulls up to help you out. At the end of Final Fantasy 3, not only do the Warriors of Darkness show up, Death shows up, and all the other really important people show up to help you fight, and through that's all done through Gratia using his summoning ritual to bring other people to help you fight, okay? Right? So then, once all of that is said and done, at the end of Shadowbringers comes Final Fantasy IV being Endwalker. Now, listen, hear me out. We don't have any story details yet, but my theory is that, you know, it's very obvious that comparing Endwalker and Shadowbringers to 4, the Warrior of Light, your character, is Cecil Harvey. Starts out as a Dark Knight, realizes things aren't the way they're supposed to be, turns into a Paladin, right? Paladin Porm, the twins, Alphano and Alize. Uh, Estinian is Kane Highwind. <clears throat> Ishtol, well, Ishtol is both a black mage and a white mage still, but anyway, Ishtol is supposed to be Rosa, right? You've got Tella, you, you, you got your you ninjas, you got all of it, right? My theory is that in the context of Endwalker and 4, Xenos is Golbez without the mind control. Because Xenos sees your character as... One of his greatest friends, hell, borderline, uh, a, a very strange brother slash sister kind of relationship, right? Final Fantasy IV, Cecil, and Golbez are literal brothers. They are from the moon. Things go horribly, horribly wrong, and then he realizes at the very end, damn, I did some really bad stuff. Let me help you out right quick. That probably explains why Xenos is on the key art for Endwalker, right? Zeromus, the big bad of 4, is most likely going to be Zodiac, for, for comparison's sake. And I think that Zodiac is going to have his own trial fight. If we do wind up fighting Hydaelyn, which I'm pretty sure we're going to do, Hydaelyn's going to have her own fight. And then, and then, and then... I think that if they go this route, Xenos is probably going to fuse with with, with Zodiac some kind of way because Zeromus fused with the big bad of Final Fantasy IV, gaining ridiculous levels of strength, right? And with that, he, we're going to have one or two outcomes in my head. Right? After we kick the shit out of Hydaelyn, Hydaelyn's gonna be like, damn, I messed up. This has gotten way too far out of my control. Let me help you out. So Hydaelyn, in some way, is probably gonna lend us some of her power so that we can box the crap out of Zodiac and Xenos, or Hydaelyn and Zodiac fuse together and Xenos helps us take them down. Because, because, Golbez helps you take down Zeromus at the end of Final Fantasy IV, right? So I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I am the biggest Final Fantasy nerd I know, and I've been thinking about this for a while, and I'm like, yo, this is crazy. If this happens, that will be insane, bro. Watch Xenos turn into a good guy, bro. bro I swear to Oh, <laughs> oh damn, bro. Ah. Uh, I'm t I swear I swear. I swear if any of what I just said happens, I'm going to scream. I'm I I I, ooh, I am going to take this entire segment of me running my mouth, I, I, I'm going to make this a separate video. I'm going to throw it into YouTube. I'm going to put it in my editor, and I'm going to say, I called it. I called it 100% if any of this happens. But, but like, bro, listen, listen. There is a very strong reason that Xenos is on the key art for the expansion, posted up with all the scions, bro. I, oh, oh, 